Okay, what we're going to do today is finish off the A to Z of HTML and look from S2 through to V. Okay, it's not many really. I want to try and get them all done in one go. All right, the first one we're going to look at, I've actually included already. Uh, you may want to have something that looks like computer text on your page. Don't know why. Anyway, you may want to. So what we're going to do is uh, type in something. This is supposed to look like computer code, and you'll notice because I've added the actual option, which is sample or samp. Okay, and I closed it there. It actually makes it look like computer text. All right. So that's the first one we're going to talk about. The second one is there's two ways of doing the second one. We need to do it either in the header section or the uh, body section. And what we do there is we actually uh, type in uh, script. So find our source, add it, and then type in type, and then put JavaScript. Now, the funny thing is here because we're not actually including everything in the actual. Uh, middle of those two open and close it still needs to actually uh, have them don't know why anyway basically what it's doing here is it's calling this JavaScript like it would call the uh, CSS script and it basically then allows you to call uh, variables and uh, attributes and actions and whatever okay if it's ever mentioned somewhere down later on in your uh, body section that's one way of uh, attaching a, a script option the second way is to actually include it inside your HTML by basically doing something like script, okay, and then call it uh, language JavaScript, for instance. Close that, and then obviously you need to know how to write JavaScript. <laughs> uh, some people don't. I don't know how to do it, but I know, for instance, you can write document, write. Like so, then open a bracket and then say something like this is Java JavaScript. Like so, and obviously you've got to then close it. it doesn't seem to auto complete for some reason. Okay, now what that should do, hmm, will it work or not? Will it work? Save. Okay, I'm going to look at it inside uh, Safari. Press repeat. See there it says this is JavaScript. Okay, so basically it's writing it to the uh, HTML. Why the hell you want to do that? I don't know, but anyway. So what you can do is actually add the script option inside your body or inside your head. All right. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, move on a little bit. Go to the next uh, piece of code, which is. The next one I'm going to talk about is uh, something we actually mentioned before when we're talking about making frame, I mean, making forms, and that's uh, to create uh, something similar to this. Actually, you can see it down in the thing, so you can select things. Okay, and the way we write this is you just type in select. Okay, like so, and you close it like that. And then what you need to do is just then create options. So you put option, and then put the value of the option, which will be this. Okay, for instance, I'm just going to give you two, so you can see what happens. Just make sure it's on a different line, and just change that to that. Okay, because you have to actually give it a term. So it's <laughs> this, that, save. Go back to Safari. There's a difference between the actual value and the actual display, you see. There you go, this and that. So when it posts it, it'll actually mention it's this or that. Okay, that's what you need to do with the selection option. All right. Next thing on our list is small. Okay, so what we do here, we just type in small. Let's put it on a paragraph as well, because it's going to keep button up on everything. This is small. Text. Like so, Oops, make sure you close the paragraph. Save. 
What that does is uh, makes. Oops. I'm not spelled today. Save that. This is going to make uh, your text look smaller than uh, anything else. That's the proper size and that's the small size. And you can see the difference. Okay. So if you do want to have small text, there you go. That's how you do it. Okay. Next on the list is we've talked about this again as well. What you can do is type in the word strong. Okay, this is bold text. I spell everything right this time. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna. What I'm gonna do next actually is I'm gonna put in B. This is bold text. Okay, like that as well. And what you'll notice is both of them are going to be bold text. Okay, it's just two different ways of doing the same thing. I don't know why you would want to do strong and not B. Okay, because it takes up more words, basic letters, basically. Okay, strange, but there you go, that's the way life is. Next one we're going to talk about is um, sub. Okay, you can have subtext. Alright, so what I'm going to do is to make a P. This is some, some text, and this is sub. You'll notice obviously it's not a subtext at the moment, but what I'm going to do is do that and then put the close after it. Sub. Okay. What that should do is it should make it so the text is literally underneath the base. Basically, you know what? Well, you should know what uh, things are happening in text, textology, okay, typography or whatever. Okay, and this is your baseline, and what it's doing is it's adding your subtext yeah, underneath your main baseline area. That's what it does. Okay, what else you can do is something called super. Okay, so what I'm going to do is do another P. This is more text with some super script. Let's so close that. See my spelling is terrible today. Anyway, I'm going to add super there and close it. Oop, yeah, spell it super. Spell it sup. Okay, super. Like so. And what that does is it does the opposite. It basically puts it above. Uh, the normal position of text. Okay, so there's two different ways you can actually uh, write things. This is quite useful if you want to do mathematical equations or something, anything, anything that needs that kind of text. Okay. Our right, next one on the list is we've talked about this before. Okay, because we've done some elements of the table. Uh, basically, it's table. Yeah. Right, so you notice everything goes green. Okay, I'm just going to close it as well. That basically defines a table. Obviously, it's not going to show because we haven't actually got anything in the table. So what you have to do is you have to call uh, what's known as a table row, TR. And then inside the TR, you need to call a TD. Okay. And you can close the TD on the same line and then close the TR on the next line. Like so. What that should do is it should give you one table element. Okay, if I then keep changing this, so it's got four, say, it's going to give me four dimensional rows. Okay, if I change that, so I've got that, it's going to give me two rows and two columns, and you can not really see anything there because I haven't actually given it a width and a table size and all this kind of stuff. But you can see that it does exist. Okay, so if I put in something like, for instance, one, two, three, four. Okay, let's just copy that again. So we'll put it on the second line. Like so, you'll notice it then fills the uh, table in. Okay, so that's how you create a table, and that's the T table there and a TR and a TD we talked about I think before.
Oh no, we're going to talk about them later, so I can call them. talk about them now. TR stands for table row, which is this thing. Okay. And TD stands for the table data, which is one cell, which is, say, for instance, where it says one. Okay, so there's table, TR, TD. Okay, that's how you do it. The next thing on the list is the table body. All right, what you can do, you notice this where it says uh, TR, yeah, TR. This is uh, where your data is. You may want to put a header and a footer and actually the main area in the middle. So what you can do, which is quite nice inside uh, tables, so I don't know why you want to use a table, but anyway, <coughs> what you can do is, say for instance, I uh, select one of those again, go to the top and add it, like so. What you can do is call that as a, what's known as a table header, T head, okay? Like so, and if I close it underneath that, T head, like so. Oops, close it, close it. Now, that doesn't seem that important because it's basically at the top anyway. All right. What you can do is if I did the same again, copied all of that, underneath that I put uh, T T foot yeah and close the T foot yeah like so what you'll notice is it's basically starts off with T head T foot and then it's got the actual data here what it's doing though what it will do is it's actually going to order them so basically, let me, let me just change the T foot. So we go T. So if I change that instead of, so you can see what's happening. Say this is a result. Let's say it's got the word results at the bottom of each of those. And we sort of say this is, let's say, call it a question. Like so. Yep. What you'll notice, you see what's happened? See, it should theoretically have results on the second line, but it's not because it's understanding that it's actually the footer of your uh, of your table. So what you could do is keep all the data quite happily and uh, written at the top part of your actual page, bottom of your page, and then deal with uh, leaving the actual header and the footer at the top, and you don't ever have to touch them again. Okay, so that's quite interesting and. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Like so. Alright. Now, if you wanted to just complete this off, you'll notice, as I said, we've got this T foot and T head. What you can do is, if I wanted to just make things easier, you can put T uh, body there. And then at the bottom of where your body of your table is going to finish. You can actually put uh, and close it. Yeah, like so. All that's doing is just finishing everything off because you've got T, foot, head, and body. Okay. You can then obviously classify these, give it a class, and then style the whole thing. Okay. Next on our list. Let's cross it on. Next thing is to do with a uh, form again. I talked about this. We we'll create something called a text area. Okay, you know, it's gone orange because it's got something to do with the form. If I just close the text area, like so, probably not going to. Is it going to show anything? Yeah, it does show something. Basically, it shows the actual fact that you've got a text area. Okay, save that. If I go to Safari again, refresh. And it's there it is text area. And it's just a way to then type a message, for instance, on your web page. Okay, that's so that's text area. All right. Next on our list, you'll notice on most web pages, and I don't have to do anything here now. Is uh, let's go back to our web page. It says A to Z of HTML. Okay, this is called your title. 
It appears in your header section. It always when you use Dreamweaver, it automatically puts the title, but it doesn't actually put the name of the title. Obviously, it doesn't know what you want to call your web page anyway. <laughs> Uh, so what you have to do there is type it in, but that's where it basically sits, and that's uh, the title. All right. Now, some other things we can do. I'm going to just create another P paragraph, like so. What you can do is this is some what do you call it? Tele tele type. Tele type. Okay. What you do is you then go to your uh, Thing and do that tt and then you put that and close it what that should do is strange thing is it should make it look roughly the same as this computer type basically it's says that you know maybe it's not tele type that's tele tele type tele type however it's spelt anyway okay that's the way you do it and it's just another simple variation all right Next one, last but one, if I create uh, something called a UL, which is a, it's basically it's an undefined list, and I've mentioned this before. Let me just type, type in some options. LI, this, close that, and then say, for instance, LI, that, and then type in something like uh, the close of that. What it does is it basically makes a list, but it doesn't give you a structured part of the list, which is not uh, one, two, three, or A, B, C. It's actually dotted lines, so it's like bullet point list. Okay, that's basically it stands for undefined list. Okay, now the last one on the uh, list is the var option. This is a variable. Okay, like so. What that does is it just basically gives you some text, and it's a bit like the uh, the citation one. It just puts it into italics automatically. Okay, and that's basically it. That's your full list of uh, HTML terms. And what we're going to do next is to move on to talk about uh, CSS. Okay, hope that helped.